Good afternoon. James Madison, Fourth President of the United States, and welcome to another Moment with Madison. I graduated from the College of New Jersey at Princeton at 18 in 1772, and I was eager to get out of the world and be part of what was happening. Unfortunately, I was compelled to stay home and tutor my younger siblings. I was so frustrated. I wrote my good friend from college, William Bradford, how much I wanted to be with him in Philadelphia, where things were happening. Philadelphia was a city of adventure, excitement, progress. In 1776, there were over 20,000 people there, compared to Charlottesville with, with one. When the Boston Tea Party occurred, I was eager to get there. Virginia was a complete political backwater. Philadelphia, New York, Boston, that is where things were happening. And then, Patrick Henry gave his most famous speech at the Second Virginia Convention. It was explosive. Patrick Henry was a wild and passionate individual. He was 15 years older than me and a mesmerizing speaker. Powerful, loud, determined, obnoxious, self-important, but above all else, inspiring. He, he liked to dress in buckskin and wear woolen stockings and, and an unpowdered wig. He, he liked to portray himself as a tough backwoodsman. He most certainly was not. <laughs> but he could talk. I, I shall make an attempt at reciting a bit of his oration. You must not expect too much from me. Remember, I am five foot four. 100 pounds. I am uncomfortable in groups at best. I often have trouble getting my words out. At the Constitutional Convention, people had to lean in to hear me because I spoke so quietly. Among my friends, I was just the opposite. Relaxed, happy, confident. I could tell a ribald joke with the best of them. And children. Dolly and I always loved to have children about. However, let me go now. So, March 23rd, 1775, Patrick Henry is speaking at the Second Convention in Richmond, Virginia. <clears throat> Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war has actually begun. Why stand we here idle? What would gentlemen have? What do they wish? Is life so sweet and peace so dear as to be purchased the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death. The speech spread across the colonies like a lightning bolt. A month later, April 20th, 1775, one day after the Battle of Lexington and Concord, Lord Dunmore, the Royal Governor of Virginia, sent troops to take powder from the armory in Williamsburg. 600 armed men gathered at Fredericksburg, threatening to march against the British. After much discussion and debate, Colonel Washington and the cooler heads concluded that it was not time for military action. Patrick Henry saw things differently. He returned home to Hanover County and gathered 150 men to march 100 miles to Williamsburg. I determined that if it was to be fighting, I should be there. My brother Ambrose and I, we jumped on their horses and raced after them as fast as we could. We were too late. When the Hanover militia approached the city, Lord Dunmore did not want a repeat of Lexington and Concord. So when Henry demanded he return the powder, Lord Dunmore wrote a bill of credit for 330 pounds. About this time, Ambrose and I rode up. Remember, I was 23 years old, full of enthusiasm, and I had no experience whatsoever. <clears throat> Colonel Henry, Colonel Henry, 
James Madison, Jr., Orange County, Virginia. Sir, my brother and I have ridden hard to be with. We hope to stand beside you in battle. He assured me that I might yet do that, that war was coming and it would not be long. He said he saw strong determination in my face and that he saw greatness in me. He saw greatness in me. I rode home with my heart a flutter. Over the next years, Henry would be elected governor of Virginia, and I would serve with him. He would become my friend, my mentor, until we disagreed, and then we became bitter political adversaries. But we shall discuss that when we meet again at another moment with Madison.